You are on, my friend. Good morning, ladies. So good to see everybody. Um, today we're going to do baked fish with an avocado mango salsa. Um, I'm going to show you my trick for rice. Uh, for many years, especially at high altitude, rice kind of kicks my butt. So I'll show you my secrets. And I thought we'd do a little dessert. We haven't made dessert yet. I'm not a big dessert eater at all, but I found chia pudding and I'm kind of obsessed, obsessed with it. So let's cook. Um, now I'm gonna like prep everything like I normally would for, for dinner. Um, good morning. Um, can the other person put my last name in? It's okay. You don't need your last name on this one. Okay, sorry. It's okay. You're fine. I so I'm gonna prep get my credit in. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna um, go ahead and prep everything like I normally would in the morning for dinner. Um, I'm not gonna cook the rice now. I'm not gonna cook the fish now. I'm just gonna show you what I do. Um, during the day to make dinner time really easy. Um, I know a lot of you have been here cooking with me um, the last couple of weeks. I have two little kids. Dinner time is insanity. So whatever I can do to make that time of the day easier, um, I do. So I have, I'm going to make rice tonight. There's two cups of water and a tablespoon of salt in here. And then I'm going to put about a teaspoon, I'm sorry, tablespoon of butter. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt in here. Then I'm just gonna put this on the stove for later. It's ready to go. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. Takes about, mm, not, not very long in my kitchen, uh, about five minutes. Let it start bubbling. Pour your one cup of rice inside. Stir it. It'll be bubbling pretty good. Cover it. Turn it down the lowest setting on any of your bur burners. 20 minutes. Don't touch the lid. That's the, uh, that's the key. Just don't touch the lid. After 20 minutes, you turn it off. You can just let it hang out or you can open it and you can go ahead and eat it right away. You'll have fluffy, perfect rice every single time. I know, it's so simple. So I'm just gonna set this on the stove for later tonight. And again, that was a two to one ratio. I always do two parts water to one part um, rice. That's it. Okay, let's do our dessert. Because this needs to set. This is one cup of almond milk and one cup of coconut cream whisked together. I'm gonna add mind three tablespoons of maple syrup. You can use whatever. Oops. You know, whisk that together. What's the other two things you put in the bowl? It was almond milk and coconut cream. Now, I'm going to go ahead and taste this and make sure that it's where I want it. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more maple syrup. So let's do four. Oh, you know what? I should have put six in here. It's three tablespoons. You say coconut cream? Coconut cream. Okay, so change that. One cup coconut cream. One cup almond One milk. One cup. Okay. And then six tablespoons of maple syrup. And again, I'm going to taste it because I want to see where it's at. Mmm, that tastes perfect. How much on the almond milk? One cup. I'm going to put just a tiny pinch of salt. I know that seems weird for dessert, but salt really brings out the flavor. And mm. every How much on the maple syrup? Six tablespoons. Okay. So we have our salt, our sweetener. Coconut cream, almond milk. We're gonna put in a half a cup of chia seeds. Now these swell up pretty fast. So we're just gonna whisk that together. 
You just want to make sure that there's no lumps, no dry spots. I go one cup of almond milk, one cup coconut, which means that maple syrup, right? Yeah, and just a pinch of salt. Pinch of salt, okay. And then we put in a half a cup of chia seeds. And we whisk it all together. Now I'm gonna What's put the last thing? The chia seeds. Okay. <laughs> Never heard of that before. They're delicious. So then we're just do gonna pour this in our cups. Do you have it on the box of it? Um, I got it in the bulk section. It's chia. C H I A. C H C H C H I A Chia C I L I No, just C H I A. Okay, got it. C H I A. Okay. How much? A half a cup. Half a cup? Yeah. Okay, so we have our chia seed pudding. Now what's gonna happen is the chia seeds are gonna soak up all of that liquid and it's gonna become like really rich pudding. I'm gonna let these set for a little bit and then I'll put the toppings on a little bit later. We'll just let those hang out. Oh, and I forgot to remind you guys, save your butter paper. Just put them in a bag, put them in your freezer. Okay, let's make some salsa. So this is my mango avocado salsa. Uh, sometimes I make it a little bit different, just depends on what I happen to have. Um, today I'm going to do mango, avocado, a tiny bit of red onion, some limes, some tomatoes, and some green onions. The lime is going to give it most of its flavor and a little bit of red pepper. I like it just a touch spicy. Um, salt and pepper. Sometimes I do like to put a little bit of rice wine vinegar in it. Um, just to give it kind of like a little bit of an Asian flair. I'm not gonna do that today because I forgot to buy it. it. I didn't have any. So, but the lime and the onions are definitely gonna give it that Mexican, California fresh flavor. So we're just gonna practice a lot of knife skills today. And I know a mango can be, uh, can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't cut up a mango before, so. Um, and I know Rochelle was saying that she was going to use frozen mango, perfectly appropriate um, for this. So what I do is I take the stem side off first, and then I do a similar cut on the bottom. You always want a flat edge to cut down from, so you're just going to use your knife to peel it. I've never tried to do this with a peeler. Um, I don't know if you could. The, the skin on a mango is pretty rubbery. This will give us our nice little uh, tropical dish, all of our Tropical vacations have been postponed, so we'll just have to do tropical food at home. Um, do not put this down the garbage disposal. You will clog it. I'm just putting it out of the way. Okay, so the seed in a mango is like an oval shape and is right in the middle. So if you cut down, you're gonna like basically cut it in thirds. The middle's gonna be the seed and then a third on either side. Now, how big the seed definitely depends on the mango itself. Um, I'm going to try right here. That's perfect. I could feel the seed with my knife. See that one? I'm just a little bit too close. So I'm just going to go out just a little bit and pop that side off. 
And then I don't want to waste any of this mango. So I'm just gonna cut the sides off. Oopsie. And you'll know where the seed is, you'll find it. Um, my kids love to chew on this, so I'll save that for them for later. So just like we've talked about a lot, I like to make the sizes of all of my um, ingredients all about the same size. Now this is gonna go on fish, which is delicate. So I'm gonna cut it pretty small. And again, just like we've been talking about, the, the width here is about the same as here. And then we're just gonna spin it around and do the same thing on this side. So then we have our little squares. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll have some that are, um, you know, more triangle shaped and that's totally fine. I did work in a restaurant once, a very fancy one, and they would make us cut things into like a perfect square first and they would waste so much food. It was incredible, but all the cuts were exactly the same. It looked like real confetti. Okay, so again, I'm gonna slide my knife this way. Now my, you see how my hand is up? I'm not gonna cut myself. Even if I were to slip, I'm still not gonna cut myself because my hand is up here. Slice down and it's sticky. Turn it around. And then we're not gonna waste these little pieces either. We're just gonna cut them into little strips. And then we'll chop it all together. Okay, did I make mango cutting less, less scary for you guys? Every time no. you every time you use a new no. item in your Scary. kitchen, it just takes a little bit of a little bit of practice. And you know it's like cutting last week and cutting this is about figuring out what the anatomy of it is, whether it's a fruit, a vegetable, or a piece of meat, and learning just learning that anatomy. And then once you understand that, it makes it a lot easier to figure it out. Okay. Let's do our avocado. Avocado can be kind of scary too. I have had several friends who have injured themselves. Um, so you're gonna, here's the stem end. You're gonna go all the way around. I should not be doing this with a wet hand. Wet hands are slippery hands. This avocado is lovely. Okay, here's the scary part. I wanna get the seed out. You wanna make sure your knife is very, very sharp. If it's dull, your knife will slide off and you would probably cut yourself. But if you just go straight in and then twist and the avocado is ripe, it will pop right out. If your avocado is not ripe, your avocado seed will not pop out and it will be, well, the avocado won't taste very good and is dangerous. So make sure your avocado is always ripe. It needs to just be firm, but not like rock hard. So then I take my avocado and I'm gonna do the same thing that I would on the cutting board. I'm gonna do it in the skin. Don't put so much pressure that you're gonna go through the skin. It would, it would be pretty hard to go through the skin. And then see, it's just little squares. I'll do the same thing on this one. And again, be careful, pay attention to what's going on. I know when you have like all the kids running around and people asking questions, it can be, um, can be easily distracted. Um, so just take your time when you're doing the avocados. 
Okay, so then take a spoon and your bowl and you just scoop it out. And then there's no waste at all. No messy cutting board. Magic. Okay. I'm gonna rinse my knife off one more time. And we're just gonna chop a little green onion to put inside. I always like to take the tops off because they're all dry and not, not good. And then we're just gonna chop these up. Again, I just hold them like, like a little claw. And just keep moving your fingers back. And it definitely takes practice to do it this fast. And again, you're just keeping your fingers back. Don't stick your fingers out. I like a little bit of the white section, not too much. And then I'm gonna stick these in some water and they're gonna grow more green onions. I know, it's amazing you can grow food from food. So that was two green onions. Oh, sorry, three, three little ones. Okay, um, we'll do the red onion while we're here too. So, I just want a tiny bit of red onion. I, you know, we already have the green onion. This is mostly for color. Um, this is just a chunk that I had in the fridge. I always cut off whatever the exposed one was after it's been in the fridge. And this side too, just so I have nice fresh onion. It does waste a little bit, but I'm gonna put this in my stock bag, so it's fine. So we have it all fresh. Now, again, I'm just gonna use a tiny amount, so I'm not gonna, I don't want this whole thing. So I'm just gonna do three little slices. And I'll put this back in the fridge for use later. And again, I want this like super, super, super tiny. It's gonna marinate a little bit in the juice. Okay, and then it's like little onion confetti. So you guys see how tiny it is? Super, super tiny. Throw that in. Okay. Um, I have two limes here. I'm gonna pop these in the microwave for just 20 seconds. They're pretty hard. It's gonna be really difficult to get juice out of these. So if I put them in the microwave for just like 20 seconds, um, it'll be, will be so much juicier. And while those are zapping, my onion over here so I don't forget about that. Why do you put the limes in the microwave? So that they can be a little juicier. They oh. tend to be a little bit dry. Um, and it'll just make them juicier. Um, okay, how many seconds? Just 20 seconds is fine for two of okay. them. Um, I'm gonna use about half of these tomatoes. Um, I'm using uh, grape tomatoes because that's what I found at the store that looked really yummy. And we're just gonna cut those into quarters. And this knife is giving me a hard time with the tomatoes. They're a little bit soft. So the trick with the tomatoes, if they're a little bit soft, is to use a serrated knife. And then they will not slip around quite as much. And I am counting this as my vegetable tonight for the kids. My kids do, do love vegetables, but um, 
So we'll just do, they love tomatoes. They love avocados. Oh my God, little avocado monsters. Little California babies. And mangoes are their new favorite. So they'll just have rice and fish and a little mango avocado salsa. It'll feel like a treat, even though it's full of all the great colors. It's like a, a trick to get them eat the vegetables, add some mango. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I'm just cutting them in half, turning it, and then cutting them in half again. So then they're in fours. And we'll just finish cutting up the ones that are on our board. My microwave is reminding me that I have something in there. Thank goodness, right? How many times have we forgotten stuff in the microwave? I mean, the coffee that we have to reheat like 18 times when the kids are so little. Okay. So that was about a half a container. Or you could do like one or two tomatoes, depending on the size. Okay. So here we go. Let's grab our limes. Okay, so when you pop these out, they're gonna be like a little bit softer. What I also like to do is roll them on the cutting board. Just wanna get the maximum amount of juice out of these guys. And because we heated them up, they could squirt a little bit of extra juice. So sometimes what I'll do is just like put a little hole with my knife and let some of that juice run out. This one's actually okay. I've had some where they just like start spraying juice everywhere. We want that juice in our bowl. Limes usually don't have any seeds, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to catch all those seeds. Again, if you have one of those cool citrus juicers, feel free to use that. I just happen to not have one. I had a chef and strainer. You could, yeah, I mean, I don't really need a strainer because there aren't any seeds in limes and I kind of like the pulp. Oh, you do? So it doesn't bother me. Oh, cool. I had a chef and structure in culinary school <clears throat> over 25 years ago. And uh, he used to tell us, if you can't do it with a 10 inch knife, don't do it. Like you don't need all those fancy things. I mean, there are some things that we, you know, I do like a peeler. Okay. And then what's I'm, the name of you doing? This is mango avocado salsa. Salsa. Okay. So I just realized that this bowl was a little bit too small to mix it very well. So I'm going to just grab a different bowl. Okay, so let's give it a good little mix. Not too much because you don't want to really, you don't want to smash the avocado. That's looking really pretty though. Um, I always put a tiny bit of, you can do olive oil, avocado oil. Um, in any of my salsas, fat helps to bring the flavors out. Uh, what kind of oil? That one was olive oil, but you could use avocado too. Um, I'm gonna do some salt in here. Salt is definitely a personal preference. Do what you, how much you like. Pepper, the same thing. I'm gonna go a little bit easy on the pepper because my bibis. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit, like literally just a little sprinkle because that's about as much as the kids can handle. You can definitely, you know, if you like it spicy, you know, grab the Cholula, throw it in there. 
um, whatever you like. Again, I love this, especially with fish with um, some rice wine vinegar mixed in. So definitely try that. And then again, I'm gonna taste how it. Much, uh, how much the olive oil? It was about a tablespoon. Tablespoon, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and taste it. I always make sure that I have like a little bit of each um, component. It's a pinch of salt, right? Um, it was about a teaspoon probably. But again, you always just wanna teaspoon. put a little bit. Yeah, you always wanna put a little bit in and then try it. I just tried this and it tastes perfect to me. I'll definitely stir it and taste it again right before we'll eat it. But this how much pepper? Oh, like just a just a touch. Touch. Yeah, just a like I did like one two grinds. Okay. So here's my avocado salsa all ready to go. So I'll just put this to the side, and we'll go ahead and taste that um, right before we cook. Okay, look how much firmer these are. See now they're nice and firm. Um, cool. So what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of yogurt okay. on top. White yogurt? This is just a Greek plain yogurt. Green plain, Greek. And it's just super, super creamy. So this is gonna even give plain you more of a yogurt. dessert feeling. How much? Uh, just like two tablespoons on each one. Okay. Two. And then I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of honey on top because it's delicious. This is like the guilt-free dessert. You still want it to be a little desserty though. So just drizzle that. How much is that? Like a teaspoon. Teaspoon, okay. T E S T. Okay. So just drizzle that. Um, you could put coconut seeds on top. You could put coconut seeds, coconut <laughs> threads on top if you like. You could put almonds, macadamia nuts. I mean, really anything that you want. I lucked out. Any, any kind of fruit. Any fruit, kind of fruit. Right? You want to put a little bit of the sliced mango on any top. Kind of fruit. Any kind. Some berries. Of fruit. And then I'm gonna stick these in the fridge. Um, we probably won't even eat a whole one, the three of us, um, for tonight. If you have like the small little itty bitty baby jars, you could do do it in that. Um, I've served it before like in champagne glasses. That's always like super, super fun. The kids think that that's just the coolest thing ever. I have these really, are these uh, like- How about Tupperware? Sure, sure. You can put it in Tupperware. Tupperware's fine. Scoop it out. Yeah. I have these cool old uh, martini glasses from like the 50s that were my grandmother's. I do it in these all the time. And yes, those are that's like what a martini glass used to look like. Um, I'll just go ahead and cover these and put them in the fridge. Um, definitely the longer that they stay in the fridge, uh, the better. Because the chia seeds just swell up and more. It gets this really, really thick... Um, pudding texture. Um, if you don't tapioca, if you don't like that texture, you probably won't like this. I happen to love tapioca. It's one of my absolute favorites. So, but try it. It's, you know, without the Greek yogurt on top, it's vegan, dairy-free. Um, so the no guilt dessert for sure. Okay. The fish. And I got like this one, back. one more minute. This back. Okay, so I have my sheet pan with some parchment paper and a little bit of olive oil. You can definitely use foil if you like. Um, I tend to not like to use foil um, if it's if I'm going to put acid 
on it. Um, acid and aluminum aren't that great together. So I just use a little bit of parchment paper, a little bit of olive oil. This was some fish that, was, that I bought frozen, and I just put it on a paper towel to let it dry. And I'm just gonna put it on here. Of course, somebody's calling me. I'm just gonna push it on here. Sorry about that, guys. I'm gonna wash my hands up good. And again, I'm prepping this for dinner for tonight. Um, you can use cod. This happens to be rockfish. Um, I like rockfish. It has a nice um, firm texture, very similar to cod. Um, let's see, you use cod, rockfish. Uh, Rochelle was asking about ahi. You can definitely make this with ahi, just like sear it on either side. I wouldn't bake it. Um, salmon is excellent with the avocado salsa and the rice. Um, is there any other fish that you guys really, really like that you are wondering if this would be good? Swordfish. I love swordfish seared, not necessarily baked. Mm, sea bass? Sea bass would be excellent. You can definitely bake sea bass. Uh, shrimp. You could do barbecue. Salmon. Shrimp. Salmon would be excellent. I love salmon. So yeah, definitely any sort of fish. If you don't like fish, a grilled chicken breast. Um, you, you can definitely bake it and you can barbecue it. You know, I mean, chicken, you know, you can just do just about anything with. Um, I don't think that I would have this avocado mango salsa with beef or lamb. Uh, those are a little bit stronger flavors, but definitely with pork. A pork chop and the mango avocado salsa is excellent. So a lot of a lot of variations. I'm gonna grab another um, lime out of the fridge. Lime. How many lines? So now again, I'm prepping this for later today. So I'm just gonna get everything ready. Um, about an hour before I'm ready to cook it, I'm gonna cover, by the way, I'm gonna cover this and just keep it in my fridge. About an hour before I'm ready to eat, I'm gonna pop this out of the fridge. I'm gonna heat up my lime so it gets nice and juicy. I'm gonna squeeze the lime all over the fish. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with just a little bit of salt and pepper and then bake a it pinch. in kind of thin pieces. So it's a pinch of salt. Yeah, just a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper. And we're gonna, I'm gonna bake this um, at 350 for probably 15 minutes. It's gonna be really, really fast. So it's, and I do this with salmon all the time. I use usually lemon with salmon instead of lime. Um, but yeah, really fast, really easy, really hard to screw up. Set your timer for 15 minutes you're good. Um, if you like it a little bit brown, throw the broiler on for the last, you know, two minutes to get it brown and you're good. If you're a uh, handy in the kitchen, pan frying it is always delicious as well. And you can do the same marinade on it. Um, just a squeeze of citrus, salt, pepper, and uh, pan fry. It's great. So I asked too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're learning. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions? Halibut, halibut, halibut or tuna? Yeah, ahi tuna would be fantastic for sure. And uh, halibut? Halibut is great. I like halibut on the barbecue. Um, halibut definitely makes sure that you undercook it versus overcook it. It can tend to be a little bit dry. Thank what you. about tilapia? Um, I mean, you definitely can do tilapia. Tilapia is not one of my favorite fishes. Um, it is very sustainable, though. Very, yeah. So I would do, I, I like fried tilapia probably the best. Do it like a little bit of a dust of flour or even tapioca flour um, and pan fry it. You can bake it, though. Try it. See if you like it that way. I usually do it pan fried with cornstarch. Yeah, that's excellent, too. Yeah, I just found tapioca flour like six months ago and it's like 
I love that stuff. Oh my God. It's incredible. It makes everything so crispy, but yeah, cornstarch is awesome too. Love it. Okay. This has been fun today, ladies. I love this. Did you get your question in, Margaret? Did you have one? I did. Yeah. Okay. Two, perfect. Thanks. I want it. We all have to go to Tracy's backyard next time to watch this. <laughs> Look how beautiful she's up in Chico. Look at that yard. If you can see it, beautiful. All right. Um, perfect. Are, any other questions? Good. Everyone ready? I'm excited. I have all of that stuff actually for once. Or I could just have you come over and cook for us. Let's be real. Let's do it. Okay, I like to do that. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. I'm excited for what's on the menu next week. I did record this, so I will um, put it up on the, probably later this week in the next day or so, I'll get it up online maybe today. And um, not the exact recipes, but if you're looking, uh, we just released all the V-Fit Squad recipes and we do have a chia seed pudding and like a mango salsa. So if you, you have all that stuff and um, you want kind of a general recipe, we, you can look on the V-Fit website now too. We, we should start getting your recipes up there. We can totally do that, Elisa. Okay. I have to actually write them down. Yeah, you have to write them down. <laughs> That's what I like about cooking over baking is it doesn't have to be exact, whereas like baking is so scientific. Yeah, I tried really hard to like talk about like why I do things and the substitutions. Mm -hmm. you know, it's really learning to cook, not follow my recipe. I love that. I love that. That's how I am. Get some inspiration. All right. Well, have a good day, everyone. I will be back on at 12.05 and happy Monday. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.